G'day there. You're watching the Aussie Beam Guru, and today I've got an extra lesson this week, which is covering how you can add Revit 2026 support to your project. So in this case, um, it's gonna sort of fall in between two lessons because I've recorded it later. I'm actually much further in my series, but um, hopefully it's a helpful one. So the goal today will be to add 2026 support to our project in line with the updates to the template that we're using from NicePoint. So in this case, it's been a while since we've looked at the template. We really focused on it mostly in lesson one, um, but we are going to want to acquire the next version because Revit 2026 is now out. And I want to show you how straightforward the template makes it to do this. Now I've recorded this, I think about four times now and made mistakes each time. So hopefully this time we get through it in one. Um, I've made a few little mistakes each time and got stuck, but I think I finally figured it out. So bear with me. So we are building on what we have, but at the time of recording this, I know that we're only on lesson seven on YouTube, but in reality, I'm actually up to lesson 16 um, in recording. So you're not really gonna see this change reflected in my repository for YouTube C Sharp until lesson 15. So if you are borrowing my toolbar bit by bit, just understand that this change won't actually take effect until lesson 15. Um, but at the same time, if you're building your own toolbar, you're more than welcome to do this now. It shouldn't have an adverse impact on the way that the toolbar gets developed in later lessons. It's just gonna add extra capability. So thank you, Roman, uh, developer of the NicePoint template. In this case, uh, he was very helpful with giving me tips and advice on where I was going wrong when I had to upgrade my own project. Um, so I'm coming from experience in how to do this. Um, of course, most of this is enabled through Roman's hard work, um, not through my expertise. So I'm really just guiding you in how to take advantage of that template. So thank you, Roman. The demonstration will quickly look at the Git instructions just so you have some context on why we're doing this. From here, we'll update the packages via NuGet. Uh, we're gonna add, in this case, uh, some changes to the config files and also the project and add-in files, not really the config files, the configurations through the configuration manager and adjust the project and the, the CS approach and the add-in files to suit these changes. We're also gonna remove 2020 support because it's no longer included in the nice, nice point template. Generally, it looks like Roman's gonna be committing to five years of support, which is still a lot. And honestly, if you're using Revit 2020 at this point, God help you, it's, it's about six years old now. Um, but in this case, we will be looking at that as well. So uh, let's just jump straight to GitHub. In this case, I actually raised an issue on GitHub because I was having trouble um, thinking that it maybe wasn't working. It turned out that in this case, there were a few extra properties and changes uh, that had to be adjusted. So these three properties here, replace this, disable that, do this, that they were effectively the steps that I was missing. Um, so in this case, I will show you how to implement those changes. Um, now Roman was actually friendly enough to jump over to my own GitHub where I was working on my project and also pointed out that I needed to include something new in the add-in file and that I'd also made an, a mistake in one of my commits and needed to specify the context name as my own add-in. So we'll look at that step as well. And we're also gonna look at modifying, in this case, the CS project file with the configurations that we, we no longer need to or need to add as support. Um, this all comes from API 26 changes to my understanding, at least for the section with Revit context and context name. Um, so thanks to Roman for showing me that as well. So we're just gonna jump in. I do have some of this handy in Notepad++ just off to the side if we need to copy and paste a little bit. Um, so we'll, we'll call on that soon. So let's just jump over to Visual Studio in our project. So the first thing we need to do is switch to debug R25. We need to be in net core eight, at least as we're targeting. And just a reminder, it's been a while since we've been here, but this is all managed through um, these properties. So we're targeting the framework of net eight windows when we're in 2025. And the package we're gonna install per se is gonna think that we need to be in net core eight in order to update it. So we're gonna come to our dependencies, to our packages, and first we're actually gonna go and resolve this issue. So at the moment, I actually added system windows forms to the assemblies and then accidentally realized you can just say, use Windows Forms to get around having to add this because it causes some issues when you get to 2025, 2026. It's not necessary. So what I'm also gonna do is go back to debug 23, back to my assemblies, scroll down to system Windows Forms. And in this case, it's been ticked off, but I think we also need to update here. So I think I'm specifying there that we want to include system windows forms. We don't need to because adding this property at the top is sufficient 
to know that we need to use system windows forms. So we can really quickly make sure this worked by doing a build. Um, okay, there's something I need to change here as well. I think there's a task we need to fix in this case. So I'm in 2023. I think I'm just gonna go and do the upgrade, honestly. I think at the moment it's not quite working. So you're gonna to wanna to do an update. So right click update, this will take you to NuGet. And you're gonna to wanna to update each of them to the 26 version to resolve this. Now, as you do this, it's gonna actually push a, not like an error, but just like something we need to fix to our CS proj file in terms of the versioning that we're targeting. It's effectively gonna be taking away the dynamic version. So this will ensure that your currently installed nice point libraries are correct if they're not already. But then we need to come back to this file and you'll notice that these have become hard versions. Now 3.0.1 for build tasks is fine, but we actually need to reintroduce uh, the dynamic Revit versioning string. So instead of this 2026, we're actually gonna wanna put this here. Dollar sign bracket Revit version dot asterisk, and that will depend on the property that has been set before by our configuration. And it will find the first build in the package that aligns with the, 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 the Revit version number we're looking at. Whilst I'm here, I'm going to just get rid of the R20 configuration controls or properties, property group. And I'm just going to add the R26 one, which is really easy. We just copy the R25 and replace 25 with 26. And I'll just fix that. There we go. I believe um, the next thing we need to do is just modify these to add a debug 26 and get rid of a debug 20. Then we have a release R25 and then we have a release R26. That's some changes we need to make. Um, we also need to make a few modifications. So instead of publish add-in files, we need deploy Revit add-in. So I'm just gonna replace publish add-in files with deploy Revit add-in. Um, now it says uh, that disable implicit Revit usings has now become implicit Revit usings. We're not actually specifying at the moment, so I'm going to add it, set it to true. Now you don't have to add it because in 3.0.1 of builds, Roman did in this case set it to true by default if it's not specified because a lot of people didn't have it. So it was a bit of a breaking change if people weren't aware of this. And we're also just gonna set up uh, enable dynamic loading, which is necessary now as well. And that's gonna be set to true. So that's effectively the updates we need to make to the CS proj or project file. We also need to go to add in and we're just also gonna add that extra section about the manifest settings. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it. But effectively you'll want uh, this. So by default, we're gonna say false for use Revit context. Uh, we're gonna specify our context name as our project or add in name. Uh, that's enough to set that up. I believe that relates more to deployment and packaging later on, um, but I've added it just because it was Roman's recommendation for now. And I think the last thing we need to do is actually just set up our um, debug settings in the configuration manager. I think at the moment, these are probably still, yeah, these are still living here. Um, so in this case, we'll just go to edit, remove uh, debug 20, remove release 20. That shouldn't change anything here, good. And then we also need to add a debug R26. So we're gonna go to new. Good. Uh, I think in this case we don't have, I think we do have to create new project configurations. Where did that go? There it is. And we'll just add a new release R26 as well. And there it is, and we can see the configuration has already found debug and release. Um, the only thing here is I think this does seem to like overload the list. So we only need all the debugs on line one and we need all the releases on line two. So that seems to be correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one. There we go. So I think that is sufficient for the change to work. Um, 
I'm still getting an error on this loading thing, which is interesting. I might just reboot my add-in just to be sure, because I haven't seen that error before. Let's try again. Hopefully that error goes away. Not seeing it yet, so that's a good sign. <laughs> So at this point, I think we should be able to test that our dynamic loading is working. So we're in R26. We can see those 26 builds are coming through. Let's go to 25. 25, so there we go. 24. There we go. 23. There we go. 21. Come on. Or 22, sorry. There they are. And 21 it does take a while for them to refresh sometimes so don't panic if you don't see it straight away so let's just switch back to debug r26 now i believe there's an amb ambiguous reference that will potentially appear um i'm not sure if it will let's just try running and we might run into an error that relates to task dialogues no it seems okay okay so there is an ambiguous reference i came across sometimes for task dialogues it wasn't sure if it was system windows forms or revit ui um, I think because we've removed that reference to system forms in the project file, that resolves it. Um, we can see there's Guru, it seems to be loading, R26, yep. And we should hopefully see our toolbar and be able to run it from Revit 2026 as well. So there's quite a few steps there just to get there, but I mean, really it's all just enabled through the hard work of people like Roman with their templates, which, you know, obviously we really appreciate that work that they do. go so we can see that our tab has loaded which is great uh, we've got our button which hopefully still works yep there's our revision still working resizing still working yep all looks good so everything's still behaving as we expect obviously dark mode makes everything look a little bit different um, but in this case we can see that we're we're seeing our toolbar successfully in uh, this version. So that's effectively uh, the guide and hopefully helps you play with your add-in in this new Revit version. Um, if you're keen to learn more or just see my own toolbar, which is in 2026 now as well, feel free to jump over to GWiz. I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you found it useful. Um, and you can reach me over at this email or in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.